Okay, Eileen, let's see. Manual phase takeover at MC4 plus two minutes. We got the radar data coming in. Our bar crossing will be next, and then the 2,000 foot braking gate at our dot of 0.4 feet per second. Okay, very good. I'll let you have the checklist here, and uh, we'll get ready to start this. Since we're headed to the Russian space station Mir, we thought we'd tell you about how we use math in rendezvous. There's a big difference between waiting to meet a bus and meeting a spacecraft flying around the Earth at thousands of kilometers per hour. The most obvious is that in space everything is traveling at incredible speeds and no one stops to wait on the other one. A rendezvous in space is kind of like a dog running to catch the frisbee. Both are moving, but the dog is going to have to make some adjustments if he's going to catch the frisbee. Another example is a quarterback throwing a pass to his receiver on a timing route. He throws to a predetermined spot on the field, and the receiver meets the ball there. Neither the dog nor the quarterback probably realize it, but there's a lot of math involved in what they're both doing, and the same goes for us. Our target is Mir. Right now, it is circling the Earth at an altitude of 400 kilometers, once every 92 minutes, in an orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to the equator. At the same time, the Earth is making one complete revolution on its axis every 24 hours. These two motions together cause Mir's ground track to pass over different points on the Earth on each orbit. Our mission is to rendezvous and dock with Mir high over Moscow, which is located at 37 degrees east longitude. If Mir's orbit is currently passing over 105 degrees east longitude, when will it next pass over the rendezvous point? Mir's ground position is going to shift 23 degrees with each orbit it completes. The difference between Mir's position and Moscow is 68 degrees. Divide that by 23 and we find that it will take just under three orbits to close that distance. Now, multiply that by 92 minutes and we get 276 minutes. It will take Mir 276 minutes or about 4.6 hours to get to the rendezvous point. Now that we know how to calculate when Mir will be at the rendezvous point, let's see what we have to do to meet it there. If we flew the shuttle at the same altitude as Mir, we would never get any closer because we would be traveling at the same speed, but there is a way we can catch up. At lower altitudes, where the pull of Earth's gravity is stronger, the spacecraft must travel faster to keep from falling out of orbit than one in a higher orbit where the pull of gravity is weaker. By launching the shuttle into an orbit lower than Mir, we must travel faster and therefore we will catch up to it. But once we catch up, we have to slow down or we'll fly right past it. To slow down, we have to climb to the same altitude as Mir so that our speed will be the same. We'll show you how we climb to a higher orbit in a few minutes. But first, we need to know exactly how fast Mir is traveling. Here's the information we have. At Mir's altitude of 400 kilometers, it takes 92 minutes to make one complete orbit. On the shuttle, we are flying at an altitude of 298 kilometers, taking 89 minutes to complete one orbit. The Earth's radius is 6,378 kilometers, which makes the radius of Mir's orbit 6,378 kilometers plus the 400 kilometers that it's flying above the surface for a total of 6,778 kilometers. Multiply that number by 2 times pi and you get 42,587 kilometers. That's the circumference of Mir's orbit and also the distance it travels in one orbit. Divide that by 92, or the number of minutes it takes for Mir to complete an orbit, and you arrive at 463 kilometers per minute, or 27,780 kilometers per hour as its orbital speed. That's also how fast the shuttle will be moving when we rendezvous. Do the same process for the space shuttle and you'll see that we are traveling faster than Mir. That means if we don't slow down, we'll fly right past it. This is where it gets tricky. Here's what I mean. To slow down, we have to climb to a higher orbit. To rise our altitude, we fire our thruster jets, which increases our speed and causes us to climb. As we coast upward, we slow down, so we are trading velocity for altitude. We use computers on the shuttle and in mission control to work the complex math that tells us how to change our orbit to meet up with Mir. But we can estimate the answers ourselves with more simple math. Based on our knowledge of orbital dynamics, 
We know how much faster we must travel in order to raise our altitude a specific amount. Hello, For example, we know that increasing our speed by 0.4 meters per second will increase our altitude approximately one kilometer. Right now, our altitude is 298 kilometers, about 100 kilometers below Mir. We will make up that distance with several jet firings over a period of time. So you see, it sounds strange. To slow it down, we first have to speed up. We are about to make another thruster firing. Let's see how it looks on the display. Right now, the curved line of small crosses indicates we'll arrive below the mirror on our present course. But after this jet firing, the screen updates and shows we're back on course for rendezvous with Mir. It won't be long now before we are docked to Mir. In fact, you can see it just off in the window in the distance. Well, we've succeeded with our rendezvous and joined our friends on Mirror.